Greenland, the world's largest island in the Arctic Ocean. Ancient traditions, mysterious creatures, and the eternal ice have long determined the lives of the island's inhabitants. The continental drift once caused mighty mountain ranges to form along the coast. The interior of the country is covered by a vast ice sheet and barely accessible to humans. The extensive biodiversity of the Arctic Ocean attracts scientists from all over the world. They bestemmed in Lettles, and all the other go to vent and put two in two days. So they buy super. A life shaped and surrounded by nature. So it is in Navarama. It's a bit too soon. Summer at the Arctic Circle. In Asi Visuit, the rugged glaciers of the inland ice meet the green tundra. For thousands of years, these have been the hunting grounds of the Inuit, who have always fed themselves with whatever nature has provided. In 2018, the region was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since then, it has welcomed ever greater numbers of international visitors. Nowhere else in Greenland offers easier access to the inland ice. Kim Anna Heilman was born and raised in Greenland. She knows the icy landscape intimately and has turned this knowledge into a career. Today, she is leading a group of visitors from France. Their tent, provisions and luggage are transported on cargo sleds, along with the expedition's safety equipment. The group has a three-hour journey ahead of them. Their route will take them over the terminal moraine, mounds of stones and rubble pushed forward by the moving glaciers. Continually rising temperatures have caused the ice to melt and revealed more and more of the land. After half an hour, they reach the ice, but now crampons are needed to continue their journey. As far back as the 19th century, Polar researchers undertook expeditions to Greenland's inland ice. Most Inuit, on the other hand, never saw any reason to put themselves in unnecessary danger. Yet Kimanak has always been fascinated by the ice. She knows all the potential pitfalls that are hidden to the untrained eye. When we were there, a crack came. Teeny tiny millimeter of crack. And then water started coming down to it because it turns out there was a tunnel under it. So it makes these sounds like go, 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 go. And then it got bigger and bigger every time we were here. Suddenly, after three months, it was big. We can be three persons inside now. Three hours later, the hikers reach their final stop of the day. Here is where they will set up camp for the night. I need you to put one screw here because the wind it's always coming from the summit of the ice cap. They use screws instead of pegs and sleeping bags designed for extreme temperatures. In the daytime, it's around five degrees Celsius. At night, however, temperatures can plummet to far below freezing. <laughs> Time for dinner. But first of all, Kimanak needs fresh water. But 
Unfortunately, she has planned for everything. Nighttime brings a visit from the Northern Lights. They are electrically charged particles of the solar winds that have hit the Earth's atmosphere. The Inuit, however, believe them to be the spirits of the dead. Greenland lies between Canada and Iceland, the closest landmass to the North Pole. Over 80% of the island is covered by ice. Starting out from Thule in the north, the Inuit settled this land around 1,000 years ago. Disco Island, named after its round shape, is located in Disco Bay, a major point of interest for marine biologists. Long ago, volcanic activity shaped the red basalt slopes of the island. Rock glaciers cascade down from the mountainous coastlines into the depths of the Disco Fjord. The moving permafrost soils consist of frozen rubble and stones. In summer, meltwater flows down the rock face. The bay is littered with countless icebergs. Many humpback whales are drawn to Disco Bay. The water is full of plankton, fish, and their favorite food, the Arctic krill. Almost all the icebergs in Disco Bay have broken away from the Sermak Kuyahek, the most active glacier in the Northern Hemisphere. The research vessel Porseid from the University of Copenhagen has arrived on a rare mission. Its scientists are searching for what might be the most unknown creature of the Arctic deep sea, the Greenland shark. Anytime. In 2016, Dr. John Stephenson and his team discovered that Greenland sharks can live to be over 600 years old, older than any other vertebrate in the world. This time, the researchers are not only here to observe, they are hoping to catch a Greenland shark. You can see it from meter in and come to Oakland. They can be seen on two on their hind. Yesterday, the biologists anchored six long lines to the seabed, 250 meters below the surface. The Greenland shark lives down there in the darkness. It can barely see anything, so it uses its sense of smell to find its way around. Choosing the right kind of bait is therefore essential. It's day three, and still no shark in sight. For Peter Bushnell, this is nothing new. That's all we can do. There are just some things that are out of your control, and this is one of them, right? Whenever you do field work, you can't control the fish and you can't control the weather. It is definitely a mystery shark. Using a camera mounted on a deep sea platform, the scientists plan to monitor the Greenland shark. What we try to do now is we will want to see how the hind attacks its boat. Because earlier we thought that they only were oil leaders. But we have found a lot of fresh fish and fresh coast in it. So we are quite sure that they also attack the boat now. And therefore we have set a piece of sail on and had a camera on it. Okay. Barely any footage of live Greenland sharks has ever been recorded. For 10 years, the researchers have been trying to solve the mystery of this elusive beast. Yet significant parts of the puzzle still remain out of reach. Only by first catching and then studying a Greenland shark in the lab will the biologists be able to find out more. 
we just want to make sure that nothing happens to them. When you have an animal that's this age, that grows so slowly, that doesn't mature till very late in life and has very few pups, it's a recipe for a disaster. Today, they are returning to Keketasuak, the only town on Disco Island without a Greenland shark specimen. The University of Copenhagen's Arctic Research Station was founded here in 1906. It operates both as living quarters and as a laboratory. The scientists discuss the day's findings and evaluate the deep sea video footage. John has been fascinated by the Greenland shark for the past 15 years. Da møde vi en fanger i en åben båd, og han havde en 3,5 meter lang grønlandshaj hængende for siden. Og da jeg udbrød bare, wow, det er en grønlandshaj. Og jeg troede, de var meget svære at fange, og meget sjældne. Og der var det skiberen, han sagde ligesom, at han havde hørt rygter om, at de blev meget gamle. Så det var der, hvor jeg ligesom tænkte, det må vi prøve at undersøge nærmere, det der med, at de bliver meget gamle. Any more sharks? Christian? Suddenly, the footage reveals a Greenland shark after all. Tomorrow, the researchers will set out once again to find it. Check along lines and bring a shark in. Right, it took us almost all. The Ingelfield Fjord in the region of Thule, in the far north of Greenland. In summertime, narwhals come here to give birth to their young. They are also known as sea unicorns. Their highly sensitive tusks help these mammals find their way under the water. Mountains of basalt and sandstone rise from the banks of the fjord. The Arctic fox is one of the few land-based animals that lives here, alongside humans. Today, the Inuit hunter Mess Ole Christiansen is at the Ingelfield Fjord to hunt seals. He usually hunts narwhals at this time of year, but the hunting quotas have already been exhausted. Seal hunting, however, is not restricted by quotas, although in summertime the animals are particularly hard to kill. They dive back into the water at the first sign of danger. Mess Ole plans to catch one for his family and dogs to eat. Today, he's out of luck. <laughs> Mesole stops in Kehetat to visit his friend Thomas Dunek. With just 20 inhabitants, this village is one of the smallest in all of Greenland. The residents have no running water and no electricity. Mm. 
the two men have been friends for many years. Today, they are planning to make whips for their dog sleds from seal skin. Seals are the traditional prey of the Inuits. As always, the entire animal is carefully prepared. Nothing is wasted. Before the seal skin dries, the fur is removed. By hand, of course. Helping out your neighbors is a part of life in Greenland. The leather will take three days to dry. Then it's ready to be turned into whips. 1,500 kilometers further south in Kanga Slusuag, Greenland's only inland town and home to the island's largest airport. This hangar is hiding a rarity, the Sikorsky S-61 helicopter. It's Greenland's only rescue helicopter that is ready for operation around the clock. Pilot Fleming Biskor is carrying out routine checks. Jeg føler mig også utrolig heldig, at jeg har muligheden for at kan stadigvæk flyve den her. Der er kun lavet 116 af den her type her i hele verden, og denne her maskine er fra 1965 og er altså 54 år gammel nu, og øh, er ældre end mig. The chopper was originally designed for the open sea. If necessary, it can also land on water and transform into a boat. It's a wonder of multitasking, perfect for these rough conditions. Come on, can we got see at this Greenland was the wild west in forhold to Denmark. So, er det absolut den her hest her som jeg vil sætte på helt klart. When there are no rescue missions in progress, Fleming and his team provide charter flights for paying customers. There are hardly any roads in Greenland. Heavy loads are transported by helicopter. Today, Fleming is bringing a stone mill to a chalk mine, a 100-kilometer journey across Greenland's wilderness. Greenland is home to the only continuous inland ice surface in the northern hemisphere. It covers an area of 1.7 million square kilometers, stretching far beyond the Arctic Circle. Nearly 10% of the world's drinking water reserves are stored here. But the seemingly eternal ice sheets are beginning to melt away. Not only would the melting of Greenland's ice sheets cause global sea levels to rise by seven meters, scientists warned that the desalination of the salt water could irreparably damage our entire marine ecosystem. The night was particularly cold. 
temperatures drop to far below freezing. But for Kimanak, the ice is like a second home. La nuit était un peu fraîche, mais on a eu la chance de voir des aurores boréales, donc ça n'a pas de prix, c'était magnifique. On a passé une nuit magnifique. After some morning sustenance, the journey continues across the inland ice. The hike through the gorges will take three hours. The German polar researcher Alfred Wegener died on the ice sheet in 1930 while trying to cross Greenland. Countless meltwater rivers under the surface hollow out the ice from within and increase the risk of collapse. The Malong is right here. Play, please stay on this side. The Moulons. These are holes in the ice which branch off in all directions under the surface. This one has around 30 meters down, but it goes further in like this, like a snake. It's a big one. We haven't discovered what's under it yet but maybe during the winter we will go down and check it. Ça fait peur parce que c'est c'est on on sent bien que si on est englouti là-dedans, on se reviendra jamais mais c'est c'est celui-là en plus c'est très gros donc. Water flows here throughout the summer. By the afternoon, the hikers are back on more solid rocky ground. It's a new day in Disco Bay. The biologists are back and looking for a Greenland shark. Their colleagues in the lab cannot continue their work without a specimen to study. But we try to find some fish here here for to make some physiological tests to see how the heart of a fish can work in more than 270 years. It's quite fantastic that they can do so, so it. So that's what we try to do. John has been working with a local crew for several years. No one knows the secrets of the Arctic Ocean better than they do. When I was in Eastbjerg, I had a lot of money. So, they were our lives. Ja, Grønlanders liv, der ligger her, ude på havet, hvor der er alt sammen. Line B. The last three came up empty. We have a tangle and we have a shark. No! They need to act fast, so as not to hurt the animal. The shark is quickly taken off the hook and is tied securely to the boat. If I try to take a clip line, I have it here. And uh, Peter, can you give me uh, 12 cutters? <laughs> wow, he's really alive, Jesus. Yeah, no, but it's the boat that's rolling. No, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you need to go, right? The water temperatures in the Arctic are just above freezing point. The shark has a form of antifreeze in its blood, without which it could not survive these brutal conditions. Det der som I kunne se det der skete, det var at den var lidt mere levende end vi havde regnet med. 
Og da, selvom det ser ud som om det er havblik, så ruller båden lidt, så det er jo lige før vi røg vandet begge to. This specimen is at least 4 meters long and weighs around 300 kilos. The researchers have been monitoring the species for years in an attempt to increase their scientific understanding. Today they will kill the animal in order to study it in detail. The local halibut fishermen would be happy to help. For them, the Greenland shark is a threat to their livelihood. The fish can be lined with more than a thousand kroger. And if there's a hellish fish on a long line, then it's very easy to get out of a Greenland shark. And if it's not a Greenland shark, then it's very risky to get out of the whole line. With maybe a thousand or two thousand hellish fish on a long line. On the other hand, we know that at vi også slår nogle enkelte hejer ihjel, men vi prøver virkelig på ikke at slå gravide hunde ihjel. Og vi prøver på, at det primært er hejer, som enten har slugt, slugt krogen, eller som er beskadiget på en eller anden måde. Oh, there's a rock here. Der kommer en sten i foran dig, John. Ikke ikke Diego Bernal and his colleagues from the lab are waiting for them in the harbor. We are going to remove the heart from the animal and try to understand the way the heart contracts. We're trying to measure the capacity of the muscles to contract and relax and uh, understand a little bit more about how these hearts work in very cold and large and old fish. Does an increase in sea temperatures threaten the survival of the world's oldest vertebrate? To answer this question, researcher Magdalena Winchester is studying muscle samples from the fish's heart and fins. To make them move, the muscles are stimulated by electrical impulses at different temperatures. I'm specifically looking at how temperature affects the heart. So as temperatures warm, I want to see if the heart can still contract. The tests will take several weeks. The scientists are now one step closer to understanding the mysterious Greenland shark. Far to the north lies the town of Karnak, it's the northernmost Inuit settlement in the world. Danish whalers discovered this place at the beginning of the 19th century. 90% of the region's inhabitants have always lived from traditional hunting. They always use the entire animal. The most profitable hunting activity is the catching and selling of narwhals. But since 2019, the hunting of these animals has been strictly regulated. The quotas are set by the hunting ministry in Nuuk. Mesole is chairman of the Kanak Hunting Association. Today, he has called for a demonstration by hunters and their families. <laughs> Narwhal skin is a delicacy in Greenland. The animals can fetch a price of up to 5,000 euros each. The summer offers no other sources of revenue, and there are no state benefits to rely on. Mesole hands over their demands to the regional administrator on a USB stick. But the official is bound to the law set in Nuuk. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to do it. 
Kanak receives supplies by cargo ship just twice a year. All other deliveries must be flown in at great cost. So the people here are left to their own devices and have to manage as best they can. Misole has two children. His seven-year-old son also wants to become a hunter one day, despite the difficulties they face. Back at the polar circle in Asivisuit, part of the unique Arctic landscape near Kanga Slusuak. 4,000 years ago, the first human settlers are said to have lived here. For the Inuit, this place has always had a special significance as a hunting ground. At the beginning of the 1960s, 27 musk ox calves from East Greenland were brought to the region. The animals found their ideal living conditions here. Since then, the number of musk oxen has grown to over 10,000. Yet the preferred prey of Inuit hunters remains the caribou. Rescue pilot Fleming Biscor is on his way to a tundra fire. He is transporting firefighters and equipment to the scene. The firefighting experts were flown in especially from Denmark to support their Greenlandic colleagues. With blazes such as these, there is a risk of the fires smoldering under the ground and spreading extremely quickly, if not put out in time. Vi har haft en masse udstyr med herud, som er nogle rygsække, og så er det en, en masse jordspyd, som man har man ned i øh, jorden, så man simpelthen får vandet længere ned. Og så tror jeg nok, det her det er en par øh, brusekabiner også. Det er nok fordi, nu har de allerede været herude i nogle døgn, så nu, nu lugter det nok ikke lige frem af matas mere. Attempts to extinguish the smoldering fires have been going on for weeks. The arrival of backup from Denmark means that local firefighters can finally take a break. Hi. Hi. Greenland has been an autonomous territory of Denmark since 2009, but it is still financially dependent on the sovereign state and reliant on aid for disaster protection. I know. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if
Alan Kirk Jensen is in charge of operations on the Danish side. Jeg tror, at Grønland er jo ikke kun et emne for det danske folk. Grønland det er et emne for hele verden, fordi ismængden og klimaet på Grønland det har betydning for hele jordens klima. These fires will soon be under control, but this is only one small battle in Greenland's wider struggle against climate change. Kim Anak, the international tour guide, is on her way to the shooting range just outside of Kangasluswak. She is meeting friends here and wants to try out her new rifle. First, it has to be calibrated. Hunting is part of life in Greenland. Meat is available in every supermarket, right alongside guns and ammo. Kim Anak is already looking forward to hunting season. It starts in August. Setting off from Thule at the northernmost end of the world. Narwhal hunter Mesole is on his way to a meat depot. Two months ago, he killed the last narwhal on the other side of the Ingelfield fjord. Along with his father-in-law, Christian, he wants to pick up a couple of kilos of meat. The depot is located in his favorite hunting ground, past the large icebergs and the mighty Misumasok glacier. There is a constant risk of pieces of glacier breaking off and triggering a tsunami Landing on the shores of the fjord is a dangerous business. The Inuit have always stored their excess narwhal meat in stone graves to be prepared for leaner times ahead. The meat will be fed to their dogs. Industrial dog food from Denmark is unaffordable for the hunters and is only used in an absolute emergency. Hungry, 
när när ni kräver en nebbin nebbin nu inu inu vad jag också inte men jag det är en massa jag du är du är en man The two men make it back to deep water just in time. The Inuit have lived with the dangers of collapsing glaciers for a long time. But climate change has accelerated this process considerably. Back in Kanak, it is feeding time. Misole's sled dogs mainly get narwhal meat to eat in summer. In winter, they get seals. When the temperatures drop at the end of the summer, the animals get an extra helping. For Misole and his family, the dog sled is the only way to get around in winter. The mighty landscape of Greenland is being transformed. The summers are getting longer. Here in the Arctic, the effects of global warming are particularly noticeable. Humans and animals must adapt. Life in the Arctic Circle is changing.